and her recent online business. And I know that's a really lengthy, lengthy title. But what is an information business? Um, it's a blog, an e-sign, magazine, news, a podcast, or videocast. So this is basically what are you going to put into the base foundation to eventually build it. Um, the blog is started for three reasons. To sell a good, like your artwork, your photography, so on and so forth. Uh, to have a platform, you would have something to say, you want to say it, it's your, and to teach a skill, how to cook a recipe, so on and so forth. Um, how to do something. Ezine Magazine or News, and uh, Podcast and Videocast, they're just two different types of media that are now merging into this, the online factor with Ezine and um, Magazines have gone from print to e on and back and forth. Um, podcast and video casts are becoming more and more popular with the talk radio of today being podcasting and video casting whenever there's nothing really on TV anymore except for reality <laughs> TV shows. And we run a, um, an online magazine or, or an e-zine called Bold Pittsburgh. It's Amanda, myself, my name is also Amanda, and Jen here also runs it. So. We're going to kind of go over how we learned, um, you know, this kind of information at, at past pod camps and how we changed or how we turned it into a business. So that's going to be like the overview of our session today. So first you start with an idea. Uh, I did a brain mapping, I think at pod camp five, in one of the um, building your business sessions. And it was like, what did you want to talk about? And then it branched off and branched off and branched off. And eventually it narrowed down into, I wanted to start a dating website, basically a dating blog, how to date in this city. And I wrote out a whole business plan in another podcast uh, session. And somebody said, that's ingenious. Pittsburgh doesn't have one. Start it. Nobody knows how to have etiquette at a bar. Nobody knows great pickup lines in Pittsburghese. It'd be a great joke. So eventually he said, what's stopping you? And I said, oh, nothing. <laughs> so it started there. However, it took me about six months worth of blogging and behind the scenes work. And then I had a discussion with Amanda one day over coffee. And I said, I kind of fed up with my job. What do I want to do? And we went to a magazine. I said, I always wanted to work in a magazine. I read, read Vogue and Cosmo my whole life. It's what I wanted to do. So we started, we narrowed it down to just starting a magazine. And um, she said she was on board, and we kind of started roping people in who said they wanted to help. So we narrowed it down. We had, I had a broad idea of what I wanted to do, and we narrowed it down to one thing. And that would be your bare bones business plan. You want to start with your goals. Where do you want to see this go? Do you want to see it? Um, numbers don't really matter, like you just heard in the keynote. But what do you want to eventually do with it? Do you want people to buy your good? Do you want to just teach people? Do you want to build a name for yourself? Do you eventually not want to work in your daily nine to five grind and do this? It can happen. <laughs> uh, your target audience is very important, especially uh, you just, it, and it can be general. It can be an age range from kids to adults, but it also is who is reading you. Um, and you might not find that out until after you launch. We didn't find out that our demographic was way off. We found out that our age range, like I was thinking, oh, we're gonna cater to like 20 year olds. And my demographic was all in the 30s. I didn't, and we didn't realize that until after we launched and did a Hootsuite test on how many people were clicking our link. And it turned out that we were now catering to mid 30s and early 40s. We didn't know that. Um, the elements, what do you all wanna put into this? Um, we just have a magazine, and then we went into the blogging. We're going to launch a podcast and a video cast after the new year. So we're actually going to become a media hub of Pittsburgh and fun things to do in Pittsburgh. And you can do that. There are so many people who do multiple facets into it. Um, as you just heard the Jagoff say, he does it all, and it all goes into one hub. Um, and that's what you can do that. Another part of your bare bones business plan, which I forgot that, was money. How much do you want to sink into this business? 
Um, if you want to say, just have your, your WordPress, your Facebook, and your Twitter, and a couple business cards, you're looking at a under $100 of startup cash. And that's just to buy the name you know, and buy business cards, because Twitter and Facebook is free. You want bigger, you need the equipment. You need to buy a computer, you need to buy mics, you need to buy cameras. If you can't get a small business loan, kick start it. Crowdfunding is so huge right now. The third is anonymous people giving back, giving into these, these plans. Um, what makes up your business? Um, you do. <laughs> it's where you want to go. Anybody can do this. As I wasn't thinking I was going to do it, and then I, we did it together as a team, and we're still working and we're still growing. So, I'm gonna talk uh, about marketing. Yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about marketing. <laughs> marketing can kind of seem a little scary, but it's it's really not. It's it's really self-explanatory. So. You'll see this graph in any marketing, um, any marketing textbook that you will ever see. There's a similar graph in here, and it starts at the top. Situation analysis. Pretty much all you have to do is kind of figure out where you are and where you want to go. Um, a basic situation analysis tactic is um, called SWOT, which is stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, it's pretty much you just list what you know you're good at, what you're not good at, what you you know your your opportunities, where you want to go, and what could prevent you from growing. So once you figure that out, you figure out what you want to do, and that's your objective. Um, after you list your objectives, you list a, um, a series of initiatives. And then, in order to get those initiatives out, that's where the tactics come in. Um, so, whenever you decide how you want to implement these, uh, that's where the implementation comes out. Uh, once you've implemented these tactics, that's when you monitor with control. Um, you can do that through Google Analytics. You can do that through um, Hootsuite has their own analytics. Um, statistics uh, module that you can use. And once you uh, figure out where you are, that's when you go back to the situation analysis, you regroup, and you, um, you evolve. You see where you, where you strive, where you need to um, be better, um, what your new threats are, and what your new um, opportunities are. So, and it, it goes around and around and around. This is, you know, a bunch of different companies use these. Like, um, for instance, um, J.C. Penney's a couple years ago decided that they were going to um, do away with all their sales campaigns and just have low prices all the time. Well, whenever they went through that, through this, and they saw the control where it wasn't. Um, where it didn't work out, that's when everybody went back to their situation analysis and figured out that you know people weren't responding to it. So then they evolved from there. So it's not just small businesses, it's everybody that can do this. Um, your basic uh, social media, your primary ones that you'll want to focus on are Facebook and Twitter. The secondary ones you'll have to um, you'll have to modify based on them what you are selling. So like say you are running a blog that talks about, I don't know, 18th century literature and how it like responds to society today, it's probably not gonna go well on Pinterest. So, but you know, maybe it'll be good on Google Plus. So you, know, you just kind of have to decide what platforms you want to use based on what you're trying, you know, trying to get out there. Um, and then you always have your traditional marketing. Um, if you want to advertise, or if you want to have people advertise with you, um, for instance, we do sell advertising. Um, but if you don't have what they call media kits, um, which includes your 
your prices and um, your demographics. If your media kits don't, um, if they don't wow, you're you know you're not going to have people wanting to advertise with you. Um, business cards, flyers, and word of mouth. Those are our biggest in marketing. Um, we also have some business cards up here, but um, I I'm. And I'm sure Amanda will agree with me that word of mouth is how, how we've, you know, we've really grown. We really grew with going into Facebook and telling our friends to like our business. That was our hugest jump. And then business cards, we did guerrilla marketing with our business cards. We would actually go to nightclubs and leave them in the bathroom stalls <laughs> and things like that. They're hanging in coons and bags now because I live there. And, or like I live over the hill from there. So every time I go grocery shopping, I just pin up new business cards and they disappear within two weeks. They're gone. Um, the bathroom stall thing, we almost got kicked out of the nightclub because the guy was in there attending and he was like, what? <laughs> they were just like all over the bathroom stalls. But I mean, we, we were doing, and we leave them everywhere. I, I've oh, left them at coffee shops. I've left them, at, it's a little, a little bit of girl marketing and it, it worked. I mean, every time I leave a stack somewhere, I tend, we tend to gain followers within a week. Can you, what was the call to action on the business cards? I assume these weren't just with your name and phone number. These, these were advertising type? Yeah, they were. We literally just put down our lit, our logo, our little tagline thingy, and then literally our web address, our email, Facebook, and Twitter. And this last batch, we did a QR code that takes you right to our magazine. So literally, you find this in bathroom stall, you turn it over, and there was a Twitter handle. And people would just click on it, favorite it, then click through the links and see what we were about. And it was kind of, it was neat. Nobody had to know our names. Nobody knew who did it. I was only caught because they caught me doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and they just made me clean them all up. And then I went in an hour later and did it again. <laughs> um, but word of mouth was our other big one. Um, like I said, we told our friends to like it. I've told people as I was serving them coffee, at working in my second job at the time, um, people I work with will see my business card hanging in my cubicle. They they just see it and they ask questions. What is that? Or they'll Google it. They'll Google it. I've caught my coworkers like, what's hanging in our cubicle? And they'll Google Old Pittsburgh and it'll come up. And my face won't be on it until you click through it and eventually find out it's me. But they they don't get it. They just they look up the name. Um, the, that was our biggest thing. Was yeah. I don't want to abandon traditional marketing. I mean, it still works. I mean. I, going completely social was great, um, and inviting our friends, like word of mouth through Facebook and Twitter was great, but it didn't, I didn't want to abandon the traditional stuff. I didn't want to. Just like I don't want to traditionally just be an e-sign, we would love to go to print someday, but, and continue to grow, but as of right now, that's what's working. It goes back to like reevaluating what you're doing with your business. If something's not working, change it, try something new. So at this point, you haven't launched yet. <laughs> because I'm always one that I did like a backlog. And everybody does. I mean, if you ask any blogger how they started, they won't tell you that they started right off the bat and they didn't have something stashed in there, like uh, a couple pieces. When I first started, the before it turned into Bold Pittsburgh and it was just a dating blog, before I even launched it, I had 12 pieces written. And, and they were just hidden in the drafts of WordPress. The, work, the name wasn't even out there. Um, I had everything built for it, the Facebook, the Twitter, um, the WordPress, but I didn't tell anybody about it. It was hidden. It had one follower and that was myself. <laughs> um, so you haven't launched yet. So you have a backlog, you have a bunch of work, you have your marketing plan in place. Now you wanna go secret or you wanna go all out? We just heard from John that he was secret at first and then went all out. We went all out, people knew our faces right off the bat. And there are multiple ways you can do it. Um, your face being attached to the blog is one, or the e-sign, whatever, podcast, video cast. Video cast is hard to be kind of behind the scenes, I'll tell you that much right now. Um, so that one you really can't do. Um, 
I write terrorizing social media. Okay, well this gets back to the marketing plan. We'll tell you the funny story that we did. We launched, we did a couple months of just tweeting every once in a while, Facebooking every once in a while, blah, 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 blah. We weren't seeing any growth. So we went back and we got hooked up with Hootsuite and I said, I just want to find out what will happen if we tweet every half an hour from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. go. <laughs> And it was amazing, actually. My phone didn't shut up for a week. It literally was like retweets, favorites, <laughs> shared, this, that, and I, and we gained followers. Like we gained at least six followers a day. And that's huge for just somebody who is just starting out, third issue. Our, the views on the blog, everything went up, skyrocketed. We literally were terrorizing people with social media. Like they were getting bombarded. And we never heard a complaint. Never once was anybody told us to shut up and things like that. So we just, we toned it down the following few months after that. But when we first initially decided to do it, we were three issues in and we said, oh, let's just do it. What's the worst that they can do is unfollow us, right? Um, again, have a backlog of pieces. I'm always writing, I know other bloggers who are always writing and they'll just stash it in a WordPress in their draft section. And then if they can't get to it that week, with your game plan, which is your editorial calendar, um, they have something to throw up so that they stay present. They stay ongoing. Your editorial calendar is a huge thing. You can Google editorial calendars and they come up with a ton of them and customize your own. Um, I'm working right now with a gentleman in New Hampshire who is an information designer. He makes forms and things for like daytimers and so on and so forth. He is actually working with me this month to design an editorial calendar that mixes with the marketing calendar <laughs> because there's not one that exists. Like I want to be able to say on this day I'm going to release the blog and it's going to go out on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And I want to be able to lay that out on the calendar. But Google has a whole bunch of really cool ones that you can fill in the blanks. And your editorial calendar will be like days to write, days to launch, um, what you want to post what day, and basically it'll keep you on track. Um, we were we were way off track until we tested. We did an editorial calendar and we really stayed on track after we did it. Your press release. Um, you can do a press release um, and send it to news medias. It just depends on how much you want to get out of the spotlight already. It, it's still recommended. I mean, you can still be picked up and put on other people's blogs and so on and so forth. And it will it'll help you great. It's just another set of uh, word of mouth. And oh, keep terrorizing. Don't give up. If you get frustrated with Facebook, it's OK. I get frustrated with it, too. I don't, um, I get very frustrated. Um, but I just don't ever quit. I'm not going to abandon. Facebook because of the algorithm. I refuse to. Um, I'm hoping someday he'll change his mind and it'll go back to the way it was. And if anybody doesn't know, the Facebook algorithm is really messed up. It's um, your posts do not get seen by everybody who likes you. So you have to continuously post. We found that our when we posted six times a day on Facebook, only two got shared one got seen and we have close to 400 followers and only they were only 30 people were seeing our posts and I don't want to pay to boost the post that's I'm not paying Mark, Mark any money <laughs> to do it not when he's doing it the old way um, okay so launch uh, slowly or a gradual build is basically your word of mouth um, you start out small and then you grow. Um, again, or you bombard Facebook algorithm, you cheat it, Twitter, Life, and Hootsuite. Um, you can basically then be on, in everybody's face all the time. <laughs> so it's, it's two different ways that you can do it. Um, and get out there and get seen. Uh, that's my favorite thing, too. Um, is there are a book that I can recommend. If you are doing a video casting, I highly recommend Get Seen. It's a few years old now, but Steve Garfield wrote it, and it's basically, I love to call him the grandfather of video podcasting, because he's 
he literally know this book is amazing. I'll tell you what mics to buy, what cameras to buy, so on and so forth. And he just he tells you how to do it from like and it reads like if you want to get to point A, do this. If you want to do this, do this. And it's it's amazing. I have a couple other books that I'll tell you at the end too that I highly recommend for if you're starting some small businesses. Um, this goes back to what we said. You just keep growing. Try the slow route. If the bombarding didn't work, try it slow. If the slow didn't work, try bombarding. Um, don't get frustrated and give up. <laughs> That's my biggest thing. Try, try again. Don't get frustrated, don't give up. There have been a few times where I've just been like, forget it, this isn't working. I'm done, I'm done, I quit. Want to delete the entire thing, crash the Facebook page and everything, and no, I don't let myself do that. <laughs> and that's why you also surround yourself with supportive people. They're like, don't, no, just don't. <laughs> yes. These guys have pulled me back multiple times off oh the brain. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Don't dump a copy on your own computer. Um, <laughs> um, making the green. Okay, so in the beginning I said, you're t in your media kit, you want to think about your budget. Now, how do you make your money back? Okay. You cannot get rich right away off of podcasting, video casting, blogging, or any type of magazine or design or anything like that. You won't. Not off of that. You will make, you can make some money. You can't make a million dollars. And that's the way with any kind of small business. <laughs> is you have to like start from somewhere. So I'm saying $100 to start. You really want to get into it, and you need camera equipment, so on, and mics, and computers, and so on, and so things like that. You get into Kickstarter, crowdfunding, small business loans. If you're opening a store, or, and things like that, I can highly suggest that. But again, you're not gonna if you have horrible credit, you're not gonna get it. Making the green back, test products, offer to review the product. Um, that can gain you some type of traction with them to then offer advertising. And people love it when you write about their products. I know people who get free stuff all the time and then blog about it, and then they have just this weird amount of stuff in their house. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what if you get something you don't like? You're allowed to be honest. It's constructive criticism, though. Of course, you don't want to totally be mean to them, yeah, and then. Yeah. Yeah. You, you want to offer constructive criticism. And that's the, th I write about the restaurants and I always find one thing wrong with every single restaurant in Pittsburgh. I'm extremely picky. Either it's the food, the atmosphere, the music, how loud the bar is, how loud this is, but I never put that in. I always say, well, you know, I made a reservation two weeks in advance. I would have appreciated an actual table, not an end table to eat on. So I mean, things like that, that's constructive. It's not, oh my God, it was the worst restaurant ever. This was horrible, this was horrible, this was horrible. I would never ever do that. I just wouldn't publish it. Because I wouldn't want them to go, oh no, forget it then. We would never support you. And everybody in that business, talk. And if one of them rejects you, all of them are rejecting you. Um, <laughs> do products that Contain, pertain to your business and cross marketing. Again, you don't want to, if you're writing about food, you don't want to review products about technology. It just won't work. Your content will be like, what? Um, selling advertising. You can sell advertising on your blog. If you have a video cast or podcasting, you can sell commercial space. Uh, take a 30 second break to thank your sponsors. So, and Selling ad space if you have an e-sign newspaper or magazine. Um, again, it all links back to your media kit. You want to make sure you clearly define what they can purchase from you. If they can purchase blog space and part of your e-sign and a commercial on your podcast, you just wrote them in. And they would love that they could be in multiple places in the advertising. Okay, so I'm going to go back to what was told to me is what's stopping you. So you have all these ideas, you have a great idea, you're ready to launch, what is stopping you? And uh, just do it and have fun. I, look, I always go back to saying you won't make a million dollars doing this, but my goodness, you'll have so much fun. <laughs> 
and it will be a learning experience, and you'll see that you at least did it. Success is only measured by yourself. It's my favorite thing to say. It's not measured by how many likes you have or how many followers or how much money you're making. It's when you say you did something. So have fun. Um, and I think that's it. This is where you can find us. Uh, and we're welcome to questions as a group of our Bull Pittsburgh. Um, but I'm AL Narcissi, and Amanda is Spots87. You can tweet us anytime, ask us questions. We love to help other people start their own businesses. Um, and I did say that I would get back to, I have two more books. One more book that I highly recommend, and it was the only reason why the magazine got started, was it's called Amazing Things Will Happen by C.C. Chapman. He, uh, I heard him speak up in Boston at PodCamps. Um, and basically it was, he talked about um, like what's stopping you. If you just try it, you'll amaze yourself. Um, and it was really awesome to read that book. And it wasn't very big, it's, it's a very small book. And it's, it's, very, it's very good. Um, and the one I'm reading now, which The Freaks Will Inherit the Earth by Chris Brogan, um, I just picked it up and I'm loving it. And it's talking about how all these business plans that you learn in business school are being abandoned and basically anybody could start a business now and it's how you build it that depends it how you are is how you're going to build your business um, heart smart guts and luck is another one that's written the same way um, it's, it's basically you're one of those four characteristic types and that's how you're going to build your business it's either with your heart your smarts your guts or just your luck <laughs> All right, so that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I'm a photographer, and the one thing that um, I like. Mm -hmm. uh, so you say that no one can see your post on Facebook because of the algorithm. In your opinion, how many times do you have to share a day in order to, for everybody to see your post? It depends. You'll go back to checking your step, your um, insights, mm -hmm. and you'll see after at the bottom of the post, it'll say seen by 30 or right. seen by 20. You can boost every single one, but you're paying money then. Um, we did. We were very successful at about five posts a day, mm -hmm. and I felt like that was beating the algorithm. Um, we got more shares then, okay. and I want to say the prime time was once in the morning at like seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah you kind of have to monitor it to see, you know, what time. statistics out there some say like a 7 a.m. a lunch post and a night post are the standard okay. um, I think we threw two more in there yeah just one mid-morning like a mid-morning snack and then one at <laughs> two o'clock <laughs> right before and like when people I thought of when people were taking their cigarette breaks is what I thought of oh this is when you got up and got your second cup of coffee it was 10 o'clock guess what your thumb is through Twitter and Facebook at your office I want you to see my post so I thought of it that way. I thought, and we grew from there. I mean, it seems to be working. And Facebooking and tweeting on the go is huge. Don't just set up your hoot suite and let it fly. Um, one thing I learned from a, a restaurant owner here in Pittsburgh is he said you need to be reaching out to those restaurants while you're sitting in their restaurant. At first, I was like, no way. I don't want them to know I'm there reviewing them. I don't want them to know that. They're gonna give me special treatment and then I can't give an honest review. Not true. <laughs> the chefs end up coming out and introducing themselves, the owners. It's a great word of mouth. It's another word of mouth is that I tweeted, hey, last night I was at Great and Grace, had a fabulous meal. Next morning, literally, Great and Grace, a 25 minute long conversation over Twitter about my meal last night. They wanted to know who I was, what I ordered, who was my server, what did I eat? They wanted to know. Then they wanted to know when the issue was coming out that they would be in. <laughs> they wanted, and I, and it was all because I was sitting on Twitter, waiting for my food, and I just tweeted, well, Pittsburgh is here having great and grace before a Penn's game. They had no idea I was there until the next day. And it was huge, they loved it. But that was a 25 minute long conversation, so now I'm on their radar, and they're gonna come look at the issue. And it's going to grow our relationship. 
So it's all depending on it, tweeting while you're there and Facebooking while you're in the venue is just huge. Any other questions? No? Wow, we wrapped up really early then. <laughs> Everybody can go have breakfast. <laughs> if you have any other questions too, help yourself do business card. And get in contact with us, ask us questions. I'll be around all weekend. I am a volunteer and organizer. So just flag me down and ask me some questions if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you.